Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Bates. I'm a mother and I'm a scientist with a PhD from Harvard Medical School. I've taught cell and molecular biology to people who are now doctors. I don't work for the government or any pharmaceutical companies. I just want this pandemic to be over. It's been hard. We've lost loved ones, income, health, and gathering with people we love. We all hate coronavirus, but many have concerns about taking the new vaccines. It's normal to have questions about new vaccines. I want to help. I'm going to explain how the coronavirus does its damage, how the vaccines work to protect us, and answer some questions that I've heard. I'm going to share my screen now so you can see my presentation. Some of the questions that I've heard are, is mRNA technology new? What are the side effects? Can the vaccine affect fertility? Can the vaccine modify my genes? And this vaccine was developed fast. Is it safe? It's easiest to think about how the coronavirus works as thinking of it as an invading army. Its goal is to take over your body to make more virus and become stronger. Our immune system is humanity's defensive army. Its goal is to detect and destroy the virus and any infected cells. A virus can't make more of itself alone. A virus can only make more of itself when it infects a cell. It hijacks your body to produce itself. In our body, a virus can mutate to become stronger, more infectious, or deadlier. That's why it's so important to prevent infection. The new variants can be resistant to vaccines or medications, and all of our advances will be thwarted if these new variants are so infectious. We need to prevent infection. Different viruses have different coats or uniforms. Here, I'm comparing the coronavirus to the polio virus and the influenza virus. If our immune system hasn't seen a coat before, it has no defense against it. It doesn't know it's dangerous yet. Once the virus is in our cells, it takes over our cells machinery to more, make more virus. It releases that into our body to infect more cells and more people. Its goal is to make more of itself. It doesn't care about us. Coronavirus can shut down whole organs if it isn't stopped by the immune system. For the lungs, that means they can't clear fluid or breathe. Coronavirus infections produce blood clots that can damage the heart, the liver, and the kidneys. It can damage the, the brain to cause stroke and mini strokes. And as of today, over 500,000 people have died of coronavirus infections in the United States, and over 2.5 million people have died worldwide. Our immune system fights back when it detects infection to save us. The system, symptoms that we feel like a fever or a headache or body soreness is oftentimes the immune system working. The real damage to the virus, the real damage the virus is doing is to our organs. Our immune system raises our temperature to slow down the virus. Viruses hate heat. So what helps the coronavirus army take over? Having a coat that isn't recognized. This is the case for most of us who haven't been infected or vaccinated. The coronavirus will also have an easier time if a lot of virus gets in at once, or if we have a weak immune system, so it has a head start. And, and right now we are outnumbered. Coronavirus is in the air because so many people are infected. What would help our immune system? A vaccine is a warning sign to your immune system to kill the virus before it takes over your cells. The original vaccines that were made decades ago were made of a dead or crippled um, virus. They would be the whole virus, but it would be crippled in some way so that it couldn't infect you and couldn't hurt you as much as the real thing. Then um, people developed, scientists developed a different way to make vaccines. It was just a tiny part of the uniform, like the hat of a uniform. And it's telling your body, anyone wearing this hat is dangerous. This was not dangerous on its own, but it helped your immune system develop a defense. And those vaccines work. Looking here at this graph, you can see by the size of the circle, the number of infections of multiple different diseases that are caused by viruses in the United States. Taking polio as an example, it was a terrible virus that could 
um, cripple or kill people. But when the vaccine was developed here in this orange circle, you can see people took enough put people took that vaccine to completely eradicate polio. So now we don't have to be scared of polio anymore. But you'll also notice that it took a long time to develop these vaccines. And these virus or virus coat decorations had to be grown in cells. And oftentimes they were grown in chicken eggs. This would be a problem for someone who had an allergic reaction to chicken eggs. And those allergic reactions scare people and people that know those people. So mRNA to the rescue. Scientists have been trying to use mRNA to make vaccines and develop vaccines since the 1990s, over 30 years ago. What is mRNA? M stands for messenger and RNA is a degradable pattern or instructions to make part of that enemy uniform. You can think of it as a sewing pattern. And then our cells produce a part of that code as a warning sign of what that vaccine looks like or what that virus looks like. mRNA vaccines can be developed fast just by reading the instructions of the virus. They can also be made fast once they've been developed. For an example, in my lab, we can make mRNA in a matter of an hour, whereas making that coat decoration ourselves would take several days. mRNA can also be adapted fast. When a new variant arises, we can read the instructions of the new variant and develop a vaccine to mimic that. Um, but it still would have to go through all of the clinical trials to be approved and taken. There's also less potential for allergic reactions in an mRNA vaccine because it has less ingredients and it's not made in cells of any kind. Is mRNA technology new? No. Um, scientists have been working on developing mRNA vaccines since the 1990s, and mRNA vaccines against cancer, the flu, HIV, Zika, and rabies started clinical trials before 2017, but we're not in a pandemic against any, in any of these diseases, and so those clinical trials take longer. So the COVID-19 mRNA vaccines are the first to cross the finish line, but they weren't the first to start it. So what's in an mRNA vaccine? It's a tiny lipid um, or fat droplet exterior that protects the mRNA, which is the real vaccine. That fat will have uh, fancy names on the list of ingredients, but anything when it's broken down to its chemical name sounds fancy or maybe scary, but it's not scary. Another example of a lipid or a fat would be olive oil or butter. We're not scared of those. Then the mRNA is the pattern to make part of that enemy uniform. It's not dangerous at all. We have tons of mRNA in our bodies. This is what helps us live and survive. Then there's also salt water and sugar. Our cells then are going to make part of the enemy uniform or that de decoration on the outside of the, the, the virus to warn our immune cells what the enemy is wearing. So here's that little fat droplet. It's going to drop in that mRNA. Our cells will read that mRNA and make one tiny bit of the enemy uniform, a decoration on the outside of that coat. Then the mRNA is going to be broken down and recycled in our cells. Like I said, we have tons of mRNA in our bodies. The mRNA is chemically different from our DNA, our genes, which are housed in the nucleus. Our genes are protected um, here in the nucleus and they don't go anywhere near the mRNA. So the mRNA has no way to modify your genes. Then um, once these little decorations from the outside of the, the virus coat are generated, they're, they're displayed outside so that our body can make antibodies against them. It's like a warning sign that says, anyone wearing this hat is dangerous. Destroy it before it can destroy you. Our immune response is absolutely amazing. We produce antibodies that neutralize the virus. What that means is the antibodies cover the virus so it cannot infect our cells. It bounces right off. If a virus can't get into our cells, it can't make more of itself. It can't turn your cells against you. 
the antibodies present the virus to cells and enzymes to teach us to destroy or eat the virus. This is amazing. This means that we are making weapons to destroy coronavirus, which we all hate. I represented uh, these immune cells called dendritic cells as a Pac-Man because I'm a child of the 80s. Then we also teach immune cells to kill cells that are infected. This is really important because we don't want cells to be working for the enemy. They're not helping us at all, they're hurting us. So these, these cells get destroyed so that we can't hurt other people or um, ourselves with this, this viral infection. So how are vaccines different from other medications that we take like Tylenol or ibuprofen? These types of medications like Tylenol and ibuprofen distribute throughout our body and stay in our system for several hours to bring down a fever, for example. They'll treat the symptoms, but they will not destroy the cause. The virus can go on hurting you while you feel better. It's just bringing down your, your fever. But the vaccines, actually destroy the virus. They're destroying the cause. And it's not even the vaccine itself. It's your immune system that's doing the work. It's destroying the virus. It is the cure and the prevention, your immune system. It's the most natural medication that there is. It's also broken down within two hours if it's the mRNA vaccines and the vaccines are restricted to the injection site. They're not gonna flow throughout your body and change all any other systems. So is this vaccine safe? How do we know if we can trust it? There was animal testing done to see if antibodies were generated or if there were any adverse effects. And this was done for both the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine and all of the vaccines that have been generated. Then these go through clinical trials to ensure that the vaccine is safe and effective in humans. In phase one clinical trials, it's looking for safety and whether it produces antibodies in a small group of people. Phase two goes through safety and efficacy tests in a, a small group of people. And then phase three tests whether it's safe and effective in a large group. Um, all of them have gone through testing in over 30,000 people. Um, now it's important to understand how clinical trials work. People will either get a vaccine or they'll get a salt water shot and they don't know which one. Then they'll report their side effects and how they're feeling and they'll get tested for COVID-19. They won't know which shot they got. And this is important because we can all feel tired sometimes or get a headache, but we determine side effects by looking at how many more people had those side effects in the, the people who got vaccines versus the people who didn't? And how many people got COVID um, symptoms in the people who got vaccines versus the people who got the saltwater shot? And you can trust that clinical trials data because it was collected in over hundred hospitals by lots of different medical professionals who had no vested in, interest or monetary gain by the results of the trials. And then that data was reviewed by five different panels, including a safety monitoring board, independent scientists, career scientists at the Food and Drug Administration, and a committee on immunization practices in the uh, CDC. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccines protect 95% of people from even mild COVID-19 symptoms and protect everyone from severe COVID-19 and COVID-19 related death. This is amazing. This is really great efficacy and safety. Um, and as of February 16th, 53 million people, seven, um, over 53 million people had received doses of Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines in the United States alone. And any adverse effects can be reported and are reported by, the, um, by doctors. So we know these vaccines are safe. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine was recently approved and it protects everyone from severe COVID-19 and COVID-19 re related death. It was tested over in over 43,000 people in clinical trials, including 35% um, people over 60 and 35% of racially diverse backgrounds in the United States. 
There are side effects to these vaccines, which is normal. The side effects like soreness, fatigue, or a mild fe fever show that your body is building a defense against the virus. These will depend on your immune system. So everyone's side effects might be different. When I got my vaccine, it was just a sore arm. Um, but for others, they might feel a headache or a mild fever. And again, these are not a sign that you're sick. They're a sign that your immune system is working. You can think of it kind of like morning sickness for pregnancy. Morning sickness tells you that you're pregnant, but um, and it will tell you that you have a healthy pregnancy going on, but it doesn't mean you're sick at all, really. It just means that the, the baby is developing in your body. So how were these vaccines developed so fast? There was funding available. All the countries were throwing money at this problem. The other reason they could be developed so fast is that we can read genes really fast now. We know the code for what's on the uh, decoration on the coat. We also have a lot of science research done about RNA and how it can get into cells. And so these new vaccines had already been developed. It was just applying them to a new problem. The other wonderful thing is that scientists from all over the world have been working together on this for this whole year. Um, I've heard concerns that some people are uh, worried that the COVID-19 vaccines can affect fertility. They absolutely cannot affect fertility. Women became pregnant during the cl clinical trials of all the different vaccines, even though they signed paperwork saying that they were trying to prevent pregnancy. Um, and then the other way to think about this is the vaccine is just a warning sign of what the coronavirus looks like. It's a tiny piece of the uniform of the coronavirus, so it definitely cannot do worse than what coronavirus itself does. And coronavirus itself has not impacted fertility, so the vaccine can't either. So the vaccine gives you a choice. It lets you decide which side you're on. Without the vaccine, the virus can use your body to hurt you and the people you love. It can make new variants while it's infecting your body, and those new variants can shut down the world. They can, uh, they can avoid the vaccines that have been developed and have us all start over again. Or you can take the vaccine, and with the vaccine, your immune system will destroy coronavirus, and it will save the people you love around you and prevent new variants from, being, from arising. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Um, I have other videos that um, address specific audiences or specific questions, and you're welcome to look at those. There are also wonderful sources of information that are published in peer-reviewed science articles or the Center of Disease Control and the World Health Organization. These are some of the references that I used. You can find them on a search engine called PubMed that's free. Um, and that's a great source of information. There are a lot of rumors out there, so it's good to look for good sources of information. Thanks for watching. And if you can, please um, fill out the survey that's in the comments. Thanks.